introduction of selections from aunt sammy's radio recipes and usda favorites this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by larry wilson selections from aunt sammy's radio recipes and usda favorites by ruth van damen and fanny walker yateman introduction aunt sammy came to life with the first radio broadcast of housekeeper's chat on october fourth nineteen twenty six the character of aunt sammy wife of uncle sam was created by the u s d a bureau of home economics and the radio service many women across the country played the part as they spoke into the microphones of local radio stations the highlights of aunt sammy's show were the menus and recipes but aunt sammy also talked about clothing furniture appliances and other family and household matters aunt sammy was just a homebody however she commented on world affairs reported the latest fads and told jokes the talk moved easily from one subject to another always natural and entertaining as well as informative aunt sammy soon became popular by the end of the first year her program was carried by forty-three radio stations by nineteen thirty two one hundred ninety four stations were broadcasting aunt sammy's show a number of the stations were broadcasting the show five times a week many listeners wrote for copies of the recipes and the bureau of home economics answered these requests with weekly mimeograph sheets in nineteen twenty seven the most popular recipes were assembled into a pamphlet the demand was so great that it had to be reprinted after only a month aunt sammy's radio recipes were revised and enlarged three times between nineteen twenty seven and nineteen thirty one in nineteen thirty two it became the first cookbook published in braille aunt sammy faded out during the great depression after nineteen thirty four the name aunt sammy was no longer used the radio show became drier and more factual and was renamed homemaker chats in 1946 it was discontinued today consumers are still looking to usda for information on how to make the best use of the food available to them a research program in the consumer and food economics institute of the science and education administration provides the basis for numerous laboratory tested recipes current recipes emphasize time-saving techniques money-saving ingredients, and good nutrition. Taste panels are used to evaluate new recipes. Research has provided a group of publications for the consumer on specific foods such as fruits, vegetables, eggs, beef, poultry, cheese, milk, and soybeans. The series is designed to give information about buying, storing, and using specific commodities, these and other publications help consumers use a wide variety of foods to obtain nutritious appetizing and economical meals providing directions for home canning and freezing is another service of the consumer and food economics institute publications give safe procedures for preserving fruits vegetables meats and poultry many thousands of these publications have been distributed to consumers and the procedures have been widely used by others who make recommendations to the public about food preservation still other publications tell how to store food properly for maximum quality and safety this fiftieth anniversary recipe collection includes recipes from current publications and a selection of recipes from the first edition of aunt sammy's radio recipes all of these recipes have been retested in the laboratory and found acceptable by taste panels End of introduction. Section 1 of Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites. This is a LibreVox recording. All LibreVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibreVox.org. Read by Julie Burks. Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites by Ruth Van Diemen and Fanny Walker Yeatman. Recipes from the 1920s, Soups and Main Dishes. 
Soups. Onion soup au gratin. 3 cups meat broth. 6 medium-sized onions chopped. 1 half teaspoon salt. 4 tablespoons flour. 2 tablespoons cold water. Pepper. Toast. Parmesan cheese. Cook the chopped onions in a small amount of water until tender. Add two tablespoons of fat from the meat broth or the same quantity of butter and let the onions cook down in this until they are yellow. Mix them with the meat broth and salt and thicken with the flour and cold water, which have been blended. Cook for a few minutes. Season with pepper as desired. Pour the soup into bowls or soup plates. Place on top a round or slice of toasted bread and sprinkle grated cheese over the bread and soup. Serve at once. Milk Vegetable Soups Milk vegetable soups are made from cooked vegetables, chopped or sliced, and milk slightly thickened. The vegetables may be asparagus, peas, beans of various kinds, celery, potatoes, turnips, carrots, spinach, onions, corn, cabbage, or almost any other vegetable. Some of these are good in combination, such as potatoes and onions, potatoes and turnips, turnips and carrots. Two cups milk, one tablespoon flour or less, one tablespoon butter, salt, two thirds cup cooked vegetables, finely chopped, mashed, or strained. Thicken the milk with the flour as for white sauce. Add the other ingredients. If the vegetable is starchy, use less flour or thin the soup with milk. The vegetables should be finely chopped, mashed, or strained so that they will blend well with the thickened milk. Main Dishes Shepherd's Pie Grease a two-quart baking dish and cover the sides with a thin layer of seasoned mashed potato. Use about two and one-half cups potato. Fill the center with about four and one-half cups well-seasoned, slightly thickened stew, creamed chicken or creamed fish. There should be no potatoes in the stew. Cover the top with one cup mashed potato and bake in a hot oven, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, until the pie is hot through and slightly browned on top. Note, the recipe for beef stew on page 13 may be used. Fricasseed chicken with dumplings. Cut chicken into pieces for serving. Roll each piece in flour and brown in hot fat. Browning the chicken before cooking it helps retain and develop the flavor. After the pieces are browned, simmer until tender and enough water to cover. When it is done, take the chicken out and cook dumplings in the gravy. Serve the chicken in the center of a platter with the dumplings around the edges. Pour the gravy over the chicken. Dumplings. One cup flour. Two one and a half teaspoons baking powder. One and a half teaspoons salt. One egg. One third cup milk. Sift the flour, baking powder, and salt together. Beat the egg well, add the milk, and mix with the dry ingredients. Drop by small spoonfuls into the chicken gravy. Cover tightly and cook for 15 minutes. The top must not be removed while the dumplings are cooking. If the steam escapes, the dumplings will not be light. Baked cheese and macaroni. Two cups macaroni or spaghetti broken in small pieces. Four tablespoons flour. Four tablespoons butter. Two cups milk. Three-fourths pound American cheese. One teaspoon salt butter, soft breadcrumbs. Cook the macaroni or spaghetti in two quarts of boiling salted water until tender. Drain. Make a sauce with the flour, butter, milk, and salt. Grate or cut the cheese into the sauce, reserving a little to grate over the top of the dish. Place the macaroni in a buttered baking dish in alternate layers with the cheese sauce. Scatter the extra grated cheese over the top with buttered breadcrumbs. Bake in a moderate oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, until the sauce and macaroni are hot through and the crumbs are brown. Smothered ham with sweet potatoes. 
one slice of smoked ham cut into sizes for serving, three cups raw sliced sweet potatoes, one tablespoon butter or ham drippings, two tablespoons sugar, one cup hot water. Brown the ham lightly on both sides and arrange it to cover the bottom of a baking dish. Spread the sliced sweet potatoes over the ham. Sprinkle with sugar. Add the hot water and fat. Cover the dish and bake slowly at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate oven, until the ham is tender. Baste the potatoes occasionally with the liquid. Brown the top well. Creamed oysters. One quart oysters. Two and one half cups milk and oyster liquor. One and half cup butter. One half cup flour. One teaspoon salt. One eighth teaspoon pepper. One fourth teaspoon onion juice, if desired. Cook the onions in their liquor until the edges begin to curl. Do not let them cook too long or they will be tough. Strain off the liquor. To about one cup of this liquor, add enough milk to make two and one half cups. Melt the butter and add the flour, stirring until blended. Add the liquid. Cook for five or ten minutes to do away with the starchy flavor of the flour. Add the oysters and seasoning and serve at once in patty shells or on toast. If creamed oysters stand, the sauce becomes thin. End of section one. Section two of selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites. This is a LibreVox recording. All LibreVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibreVox.org. Read by Julie Burks. Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites by Ruth Van Diemen and Fanny Walker Yeatman. Recipes from the 1920s, Vegetables and Fruits. Vegetables. Harvard Beets. Six medium-sized beets. One-half cup sugar. One-half tablespoon cornstarch. One-half cup vinegar. Two tablespoons butter. Wash beets, cook in boiling water until tender, remove the skins, and cut the beets into thin slices or cubes. Mix the sugar and cornstarch. Add the vinegar and let the sauce boil for five minutes, stirring constantly. Just as the sauce is taken from the fire, add the butter. Pour sauce over beets. Let them stand on the back of the stove for a few minutes so that the beets may absorb the sweet, sour flavor of the sauce. Baked Cucumbers Three good-sized cucumbers Three-fourth cup fine, dry breadcrumbs Three tablespoons butter One-half teaspoon salt One and one-half tablespoons chopped onion One and one-half teaspoons finely chopped parsley One tablespoon chopped celery one cup tomatoes cut in pieces. Wash cucumbers and cut in half lengthwise. Scoop out as much as possible of the pulp without breaking the skin. Brown the onion in the fat. Add other ingredients mixed with the cucumber pulp. Stir constantly and cook five minutes or until dry. Place the filling in the cucumber shells and bake until the shells are soft and the mixture is brown on top. Browned parsnips. Scrub parsnips clean, drop into boiling, lightly salted water, and cook for 15 to 30 minutes or until tender. Drain, scrape off the skin, split lengthwise, and pull out the stringy cores. Dip the pieces in flour and fry in fat until golden brown. Corn fritters. One cup liquid, either juice from canned corn or milk, or the two mixed. One cup drained canned corn, one and three-fourth cups sifted cake flour, one tablespoon melted fat, one egg, two teaspoons baking powder, three-fourth teaspoon salt. Mix the flour, baking powder, and salt. 
Mix the juice from the canned corn or milk or whatever liquid is used. The egg after it has been beaten slightly and the canned corn. Stir this liquid mixture gradually into the dry ingredients. Add the melted fat. If the corn is very moist, even after the liquid has been drained from it, more flour may be needed. Fry the corn fritters in deep fat, or if preferred, in a skillet in shallow fat. In either case, drop the mixture by spoonfuls into the fat and fry rather slowly. The fritters need time to cook through to the center before the outside becomes too brown. Drain the fritters on absorbent paper and serve hot. Scalloped onions and peanuts. Six medium-sized onions. One half cup peanuts, ground. One cup thin white sauce made with one tablespoon flour, one tablespoon butter, and one cup milk. Cook the skinned onions in boiling water until tender. Drain and slice with a sharp knife. Place the onions in layers in a greased baking dish. Cover each layer with the cream sauce and the peanuts, and continue until all ingredients are used. Cover the top with buttered crumbs and bake in a moderate oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, until golden brown. Serve from the baking dish. Fruits Fried apples and bacon. Select about six good tart apples. Peel them. Cut them in one-inch cubes. Fry the bacon in a heavy skillet. As soon as the slices of bacon are crisp, remove and drain them on clean brown paper and keep in a warm place. Leave about one-fourth cup bacon fat in the skillet and fill it with apples. Sprinkle on three tablespoons of sugar. Apples fried this way require a little more sugar than ordinary fried apples. Cover the apples. Cook slowly until tender. Then remove the cover and turn apples gently so the pieces will keep their shape. Let them brown lightly. They are then almost transparent. Place them on a hot platter and surround them with the crisp bacon. Scalloped apples. Pair, core, and slice tart apples preferably those of a kind that will hold their shape when cooked. Place a layer of the sliced apples in a baking dish, sprinkle with sugar, dot with butter, or pour on a little melted butter. Put in another layer of apples and keep on until the dish is heaping full. Press the apples down and put in as many as possible. Cover the dish and cook the apples slowly for one to one and a half hours in a 300 degree Fahrenheit slow oven. 15 minutes before the apples are to be served, remove the cover and spread buttered breadcrumbs over the top. Return to the oven and let the crumbs become golden brown and crisp. The apples themselves will be in whole pieces and almost transparent. Some kinds will be pink in color. Scalloped apples are good served hot with main course of dinner or supper. End of section two. Section three of Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites. This is a LibreVox recording. All LibreVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibreVox.org. Read by Julie Burks. Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites by Ruth Van Diemen and Fanny Walker Yeatman. Recipes from the 1920s. Salads and Breads. Salads. Cabbage and Carrot Salad. Use equal parts of grated carrots and finely shredded cabbage. Mix the carrots and cabbage together with salad dressing until well blended. Serve on crisp lettuce. Stuffed celery. Cut the celery into pieces convenient for handling. Fill the hollow of the celery stalks with cream cheese mixed with chopped pimento, green pepper, and chopped nuts. Serve on the plate with another salad or as a relish. Potato salad. Four medium-sized potatoes. One cup finely cut celery. 
one and a half teaspoons salt, one teaspoon grated onion or more, one quarter cup chopped pickle, one cup salad dressing. Cook the potatoes in their jackets in boiling salted water. As soon as the potatoes are tender but not soft, drain them and remove the skins. When they are cold, cut the potatoes in small, uniform cubes. Add the celery, onion, pickle, salt, and salad dressing. Mix together lightly to avoid breaking the potatoes and making them mushy. Chill thoroughly and serve on crisp lettuce leaves. Tomato Aspic Salad 2 envelopes gelatin 1 quart canned tomatoes 1 tablespoon finely chopped green pepper 2 tablespoons finely chopped celery 1 tablespoon finely chopped parsley 1 cup very finely shredded cabbage 1 and 1 half teaspoons salt 1 half teaspoon onion juice one half teaspoon sugar. Soak the gelatin in a small quantity of water. Boil the tomatoes for five minutes and strain through a fine sieve to remove the seeds. Pour the hot tomato juice over the gelatin and stir until it is dissolved. Add the salt, onion juice, and the sugar and chill. When the gelatin mixture is partly set, add the finely shredded vegetables and mix well. Add more salt if needed. Pour into wet custard cups and place in the cold until set. Turn these molds out on crisp lettuce leaves and serve with mayonnaise. Breads Boston Brown Bread 1 cup cornmeal 1 cup rye meal 1 cup whole wheat flour 1 teaspoon salt 3 fourth cup molasses 2 cups sour milk and one and one half teaspoons soda, or one and three fourth cups sweet milk, and four teaspoons baking powder. Mix and sift the dry ingredients. Add the molasses and the milk. Beat the mixture thoroughly. Pour the batter into a greased tin can or mold until it is about three fourths full. Cover and steam for three and one half hours. Remove the cover and bake the bread in a moderate oven for half an hour to dry it off. If the bread seems likely to crumble, loop a clean string around the loaf and cut slices by pulling the ends of the string. Cheese straws. One cup flour, one half teaspoon salt, one quarter cup fat, one cup grated cheese, one sixteenth teaspoon cayenne, three tablespoons water. Cut the flour, salt, cayenne, fat, and one half of the cheese together with a biscuit cutter until the mass is well blended. Add the water and mix well. Toss on a slightly floured board and roll two or three times until the dough is smooth. Sprinkle on one half of the remainder of the cheese and roll again. Repeat this until all the cheese is used. Roll the mass out until about a quarter inch thick. Cut in strips one half inch wide and six inches long. Place the strips on a baking sheet and bake until a delicate brown in a hot oven about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Waffles. One and one half cups milk, two cups sifted cake flour, three tablespoons fat, two eggs, three teaspoons baking powder, one and one-half tablespoons sugar, three-fourth teaspoon salt. Mix the dry ingredients, add the milk and egg yolks, then the melted fat, and lastly fold in the beaten whites of eggs. Have the waffle iron hot enough to brown the waffle quickly and well greased unless it is the electrically heated aluminum kind. In that case, add an extra tablespoon of melted shortening to the batter. End of section 3. Section 4 of Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 
Read by Betty B. Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites by Ruth Van Diemen and Fanny Walker Yeatman. Recipes from the 1920s. Desserts. Chocolate souffle. One half cup sugar, one half cup fine dry bread crumbs, one tablespoon flour, one tablespoon butter, one and one half squares unsweetened chocolate, one half teaspoon salt, three quarter cup milk, four eggs, one half teaspoon vanilla. Mix the flour and butter, add the milk and stir over heat until thickened. Melt the chocolate over steam and add to the cream sauce with the salt, bread crumbs, sugar, vanilla, and well beaten egg yolks. Beat well. Fold in the well-beaten whites of the eggs. Pour into a greased one and one half quart pudding dish and bake in a slow oven, 325 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour or until well set in the middle. Serve hot with the hard sauce. Hard sauce. One quarter cup butter, three quarter cup powdered sugar, one half teaspoon vanilla, one eighth teaspoon grated nutmeg. Cream together the butter and sugar, add the vanilla and nutmeg. The secret of creamy hard sauce lies in long beating. Chill before serving. Rocks. One and one half cups light brown sugar. One cup butter. Three eggs well beaten. One half teaspoon soda in a little hot water. One teaspoon cinnamon. Three cups raisins chopped. One cup English walnut meats chopped. Two and three quarter cups flour. One half teaspoon salt. Cream the butter and sugar and add the eggs. Sift the dry ingredients, reserving some flour to roll the raisins and nuts. Mix all together. Place by teaspoonfuls on a greased pan and bake in a hot oven, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Baked Caramel Custard. One quart milk, five eggs, one half cup sugar, one half teaspoon vanilla, one quarter cup caramel syrup, one quarter teaspoon salt, butter, Heat the milk slightly with the sugar, salt, and caramel syrup. Be sure the caramel syrup is entirely dissolved before this mixture is poured into the lightly beaten eggs. Add the vanilla. Pour the mixture into custard cups and add a small piece of butter to each. Bake in a pan surrounded by water in a slow oven, 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Test by placing the point of a knife in the center of the custard, and if it comes out clean, remove the cups of custard at once from the hot water. The custards may be served either hot or cold with caramel syrup if more caramel flavor is desired. Sugar can be caramelized easily by placing it in a heavy skillet over slow even heat and stirring it constantly until it melts and becomes a heavy brown syrup. As soon as it reaches this stage, take it from the fire at once and use it for flavoring and sweetening the custard. Apple dumplings. Roll the pastry in a thin sheet and cut it in rounds. Place a whole cored apple in center of each round of pastry. Sprinkle sugar over the apple, dot with butter, and bring the edges of the pastry together over the apple. Bake in muffin pans in a moderate oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, until apple is tender, about one hour. Serve hot with hard sauce. Sour cream pie. One cup sour cream, one cup sugar, one cup seeded raisins cut fine, two eggs, one half teaspoon powdered cinnamon, one half teaspoon powdered cloves, one eighth teaspoon salt, two tablespoons vinegar. Beat the eggs, mix the spices with the sugar, and add to the eggs with the raisins, cream, salt, and vinegar. Beat well. Pour the mixture into a deep pastry lined pie pan. Moisten the outer rim of the pastry and press the top crust over the lower one to hold in the custard. Bake in a moderate oven, 350 degrees Fahrenheit, until golden brown. Date Pudding One and one half cups pitted dates, one half cup milk, one cup chopped nuts, one cup sugar, three eggs, one cup flour, two tablespoons butter, one teaspoon vanilla, one teaspoon baking powder, one quarter teaspoon salt. Mix the butter and sugar and add the beaten eggs and milk. Sift the dry ingredients and add them to the liquid mixture, reserving enough flour to coat the dates and nuts. Add them and the vanilla. Bake in a shallow greased pan in a very slow oven, 250 degrees Fahrenheit, for one hour, 45 minutes, until set in the center. Cut in squares and serve with whipped cream. 
pumpkin pie one and one half cups cooked pumpkin one cup milk one half cup sugar one teaspoon cinnamon one half teaspoon salt one half teaspoon allspice one quarter teaspoon mace two eggs one tablespoon butter put all the ingredients except the eggs and the butter in the double boiler bring to the scalding point beat eggs well stir a small amount of hot mixture into the eggs stir egg mixture into the remaining hot mixture stir until it starts to thicken add the butter line a pie pan with pastry and bake until light brown pour the hot filling into a baked crust bake the pie in a moderately hot oven 400 degrees fahrenheit until the filling sets applesauce cake one cup sugar one half cup fat one cup applesauce unsweetened one cup raisins chopped two tablespoons flour one half teaspoon cloves one half teaspoon cinnamon one quarter teaspoon nutmeg two and one half cup sifted cake flour one teaspoon soda mixed with two tablespoons water one half teaspoon salt cream the sugar and fat add the applesauce and the soda which has been dissolved in the water mix and sift the dry ingredients and add them with the floured raisins to the first mixture beat well pour into a greased pan and bake in a moderate oven 350 degrees fahrenheit for about 35 minutes end of section four section five of selections from aunt sammy's radio recipes and usda favorites this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org selections from aunt sammy's radio recipes and usda favorites by ruth van diemen and fanny walker yateman recipes from 1976 main dishes baked soybeans six servings about two-third cup each soybeans dry two cups boiling water six cups salt one teaspoon bacon diced one quarter pound onion chopped one half cup brown sugar packed one quarter cup salt one and one half teaspoons dry mustard one teaspoon bean cooking liquid and water three quarter cup light molasses one quarter cup boil beans for two minutes in water let stand one hour add salt cook two to three hours or until tender drain save liquid preheat oven to three hundred and twenty five degrees fahrenheit slow place cooked soybeans in a bean pot or two quart baking dish mix remaining ingredients and stir into soybeans Cover and bake three hours. Remove cover during last hour of baking to reduce liquid and brown the top. Meatloaf. Six servings, one slice each, about one and one quarter inches thick. Ground beef, one and one half pounds. Egg, one. Milk, one half cup. Onion, finely chopped, one half cup. Bread crumbs, fine, dry, one third cup. Salt, one teaspoon. Pepper, one quarter teaspoon. Sage, one quarter teaspoon. Preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. Mix all ingredients thoroughly. Press into a nine by five by three inch loaf pan. Bake one and one half hours. Remove from oven, drain off excess fat. Beef shish kebabs, six servings. Boneless sirloin steak, two pounds. Oil, one quarter cup, lemon juice, three tablespoons, dry white wine, one quarter cup, garlic powder, one eighth teaspoon, thyme, one eighth teaspoon, salt, one teaspoon, green peppers cut into eighths, three, boiling water, three cups, mushroom caps, 24, pearl onions, whole, cooked, 24, tomato sauce, eight ounce can, brown sugar, one tablespoon, hot pepper sauce, one-eighth teaspoon. The day before, cut meat into cubes, place in bowl. Mix oil, lemon juice, wine, garlic powder, thyme, and salt. 
Pour oil mixture over meat. Let stand in refrigerator for 24 hours. The day of serving. Drain meat. Save liquid. Cook green pepper pieces in one cup boiling water for five minutes or until almost tender. Drain. Pour two cups boiling water over mushrooms. Cover. Let stand five minutes. Drain. Alternate meat cubes, onions, mushrooms, and green pepper pieces on skewers. Mix tomato sauce, brown sugar, and hot pepper sauce with remaining liquid from meat. Brush meat and vegetables with tomato sauce mixture. Broil, turning as needed, until meat is of desired doneness. Heat remaining tomato mixture. Serve over meat and vegetables. Brunswick stew. Six servings, one and one half cups each. Chicken, whole or cut up, three pounds. Salt, one and one half teaspoons. Water, three cups. Potatoes, diced, one cup. Frozen lima beans, one and three-quarter cup. Tomatoes, 16-ounce can. Onions, chopped, two-thirds cup. Corn, frozen, one and three-quarter cups. Salt, one-half teaspoon. Pepper, one-eighth teaspoon. Poultry seasoning, one-eighth teaspoon. Water, one-quarter cup. Flour, two tablespoons. Simmer chicken in salted water until tender. Drain. Save broth. Separate the meat from the skin and bones and cut meat into pieces as desired. Skim fat from broth. The fat can be skimmed more easily if the broth is chilled enough to solidify the fat. Add potatoes to broth and simmer five minutes. Add lima beans, tomatoes, and onions. Simmer seven minutes. Add chicken, corn, and seasonings. Cook three minutes longer. Mix one quarter cup water with flour until smooth. Add to stew and heat just long enough to thicken, stirring as needed. Eggs Benedict, six servings. Canadian bacon, six slices, about two ounces each. Oil or fat melted, one tablespoon. English muffins cut in half, three. Butter or margarine, one tablespoon. Eggs, six. Salt, one half teaspoon. Boiling water, four cups or more. Mock hollandaise sauce. One recipe, page 18. Fry bacon in fat in fry pan. Keep warm. Spread English muffin halves with butter or margarine. Toast under broiler. Break eggs into saucer, one at a time. Slip each egg gently into boiling salted water. Water should cover eggs. Reheat to simmering. Simmer, covered, until eggs are of desired doneness, about three minutes for medium. Top each muffin half with slice of bacon, then with poached egg. Serve with mock hollandaise sauce over top of egg. Beef stew, six servings, one and one half cups each. Boneless beef stew, one inch cubes, one and one half pounds. Fat or oil, two tablespoons. Water, three cups. Bay leaf, one. Potatoes, quartered, three cups. Carrots, cut in chunks, one and one-half cups. Onions, six small. Salt, two teaspoons. Pepper, one-quarter teaspoon. Flour, one-quarter cup. Water, one-third cup. Brown meat on all sides in fat in a large, heavy saucepan. Add three cups water and bay leaf. Cover tightly. Simmer about two hours or until meat is tender. Add vegetables and seasonings and continue cooking covered about 25 minutes or until vegetables are tender. Remove bay leaf. Stir flour into one-third cup water until smooth. Stir flour mixture gently into stew. Continue stirring only as needed to prevent sticking until stew thickens. Curried pork chops. Six servings, one chop each. Pork chops loin. Six. Flour. One quarter cup. Oil or fat melted, one tablespoon. Mushroom sliced, drained, eight ounce can. Onion, finely chopped, one third cup. Butter or margarine, two tablespoons. Flour, two tablespoons. Salt, one and one half teaspoons. Curry powder, one teaspoon. Milk, one and one half cups. Preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. Coat chops with one quarter cup flour. Brown chops on both sides in fat. Place chops in baking pan. Cover chops with mushrooms. 
Cook onion and butter or margarine until tender. Stir in two tablespoons flour, salt, and curry powder. Gradually stir in milk. Cook, stirring constantly until thickened. Pour milk mixture over chops. Cover pan. Bake one hour or until chops are tender. Lasagna, nine servings, one cup each. Ground beef, three-quarter pound. Garlic cloves, finely chopped, two. Onion chopped, one-half cup. Salt, one and one-half teaspoons. Red pepper, dried, crushed, one-eighth teaspoon. Oregano, one teaspoon. Parsley, dried, one tablespoon. Tomato paste, six-ounce can. Tomato sauce, eight-ounce can. Hot water, three-quarter cup. Lasagna noodles, six. Egg, beaten, one. Ricotta cheese, 12 ounces. Mozzarella cheese, thinly sliced, four ounces. Parmesan cheese, grated, one quarter cup. Crumble ground beef into large fry pan. Cook over moderate heat, stirring as needed until beef is lightly browned. Add garlic and onion. Cook until onion becomes tender. Stir in seasonings, tomato paste, tomato sauce, and water. Cook lasagna noodles until tender using directions on package. Mix egg with ricotta cheese. Preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. In a 7 by 12 by 2 inch baking dish, spread layers of 1 fourth of tomato meat sauce, then 3 noodles and another 1 fourth of tomato meat sauce. Top with half of each kind of cheese. Add another one-fourth of the tomato meat sauce, then the remaining ricotta mixture and mozzarella cheese. Spread with remaining noodles and sauce. Top with remaining Parmesan cheese. Bake uncovered 30 minutes. Cool 10 minutes before serving. Note, lasagna freezes well either before or after baking. Thaw in refrigerator. Leftover lasagna can also be stored in the refrigerator for a day or two and tastes just as good reheated as when freshly baked. Moussaka, lamb and eggplant casserole. Six servings, one cup each. Eggplant, pared, sliced, one small, about one pound. Salt, one half teaspoon. Flour, unsifted, one half cup. Fat or oil, one quarter cup. Onion, finely chopped, one half cup. Ground lamb, one and one half pounds. Dry red wine, one quarter cup. Tomato sauce, one half cup. Parsley chopped, one tablespoon. Thyme, one half teaspoon. Pepper, one eighth teaspoon. Salt, one teaspoon. Breadcrumbs, fine, dry, one half cup. Tomatoes, peeled, sliced, two. Yogurt, eight ounce container. Egg yolks, beaten, two. Parmesan cheese, grated, one quarter cup. Sprinkle eggplant slices with one half teaspoon salt. Let stand one hour. Preheat oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. Grease three-quart casserole. Dry eggplant with paper towel. Coat with half of the flour. Brown lightly in fat. Cook onion and lamb until lamb is lightly browned. Drain off excess fat. Mix wine, tomato sauce, parsley, thyme, pepper, and one teaspoon salt. Pour over meat mixture. Cook over low heat for 15 minutes. Sprinkle half of the breadcrumbs in the bottom of casserole. Arrange eggplant slices in layer on breadcrumbs. Spread meat mixture over eggplant slices. Place tomato slices on top of meat. Beat yogurt, egg yolks, and remaining flour together. Pour over tomato slices. Sprinkle with Parmesan cheese. Top with remaining breadcrumbs. Bake 45 minutes. Braised beef and vegetables. Six servings about three and a half ounces meat and one cup vegetable each. Beef, chuck, boneless, one half inch thick, two pounds. Flour, one quarter cup. Salt, one teaspoon. Pepper, one eighth teaspoon. Fat or oil, two tablespoons. Water, one half cup. Onions, six small. Carrots, cut into two or three inch pieces, six medium. Celery, cut into one-inch pieces, three stalks. Potatoes, quartered, six small. 
Preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. Cut meat into six serving pieces. Mix flour and seasonings. Coat meat with mixture. Heat fat in large fry pan. Brown meat on both sides, turning once. Place browned meat in large baking pan. Add water, onions, carrots, and celery. Cover and bake one hour. Add potatoes, cover, and bake 45 minutes longer or until vegetables are tender. Remove meat and vegetables from liquid before serving. Make gravy with liquid if desired. Sauerbraten, 12 servings, 3 ounces each. Onions, sliced, 2 cups. Lemon juice, 1 quarter cup. Vinegar, 1 and 1 half cups. Sugar, 1 tablespoon. Cloves, whole, 12. Bay leaves, four. Pepper, one eighth teaspoon. Salt, two teaspoons. Beef rump roast, boneless, about three and one half pounds. Fat or oil, two tablespoons. Cooking liquid and water, one and one half cups. Cold water, one half cup. Ginger snaps, crushed, one half cup. Two days before, mix onions, lemon juice, vinegar, sugar, cloves, bay leaves, pepper, and salt. Place roast in bowl, pour onion mixture over roast. Let stand in refrigerator for 48 hours. Turn roast over in bowl halfway through the standing period. The day of serving. Remove roast from onion mixture, drain. Brown meat in fat in heavy pan. Add onion mixture. Simmer until tender about two and one half hours. Remove meat, strain cooking liquid. Heat cooking liquid and water to boiling. Mix cold water and ginger snaps. Stir into boiling liquid. Cook, stirring constantly until thickened. Slice roast into thin slices. Serve with ginger snap gravy. Quiche Lorraine, six servings. Bacon, eight ounces. Pastry shell, unbaked, nine inch. Swiss cheese, natural, coarsely shredded, one and one half cups or seven ounces. Salt, three quarter teaspoon. Pepper, one quarter teaspoon. Cayenne, dash, nutmeg, dash, eggs, four, half and half, one and one half cups. Preheat oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. Cut bacon into pieces and fry until brown and very crisp. Drain well. Crumble bacon into pastry shell. Sprinkle cheese over the bacon. Mix seasonings and sprinkle over cheese. Beat eggs in half and half together. Pour over cheese and bacon. Bake 45 minutes or until lightly browned and a knife inserted into the center comes out clean. Hamburger Parmesan. Six servings, one patty each. Ground beef round, one and one half pounds. Salt, one half teaspoon. Pepper, one eighth teaspoon. Flour, unsifted, one quarter cup. Eggs, beaten, two. Bread crumbs, fine, dry, one cup. Fat or oil, three tablespoons. Mozzarella cheese, six slices. Mushroom pieces, drained, four ounce can. Spaghetti sauce, 15 ounce can. Parmesan cheese, three tablespoons. Preheat oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, hot. Gently mix ground beef with salt and pepper. Shape into six patties about one half inch thick. Coat each patty with flour. Dip into eggs. Coat with breadcrumbs. Brown patties in fat. Arrange patties in single layer in baking pan about 13 by 9 by 2 inches. Top each patty with a slice of mozzarella cheese. Place mushroom pieces on top of cheese covered patties. Top with spaghetti sauce. Sprinkle with Parmesan cheese. Bake 25 minutes or until sauce is bubbly and cheese melted. End of section 5. Read by Trish Rutter, Wilmington, Delaware, June 13th, 2021. Trish at audibleimpact.org. Section 6 of Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 
Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites by Ruth Van Diemen and Fanny Walker Yateman. Vegetables. Corn pudding. Six servings, about two-thirds cup each. Frozen corn, whole kernel, three and one-half cups. Milk, one cup. Eggs, slightly beaten, three. Salt, one teaspoon. Pepper, one-eighth teaspoon. Butter or margarine melted, two tablespoons. Sugar, three tablespoons. Preheat oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, slow. Grease one and one-half quart casserole. Cook corn according to package directions. Drain, scald milk. Mix remaining ingredients together. Slowly add hot milk to egg mixture. Add corn, pour into casserole. Bake 30 minutes or until set. Note, instead of frozen corn, use two 17 ounce cans whole kernel corn heated until boiling and drained. Cabbage cooked in milk, six servings, half a cup each. Cabbage shredded, one quart. Milk, one and one half cups. Flour, two tablespoons. Butter or margarine melted, two tablespoons. Salt, one teaspoon. Pepper, dash. Add cabbage to milk and simmer for two minutes. Mix the flour and fat and add a little of the hot milk. Stir into cabbage and cook for three or four minutes until thickened, stirring constantly. Season with salt and pepper. Eggplant tomato casserole, six servings, three quarters cup each. Onion chopped, one large. Eggplants peeled and diced, two small. Butter or margarine, one quarter cup. Tomatoes drained, 28 ounce can. Salt, one teaspoon. Pepper, one eighth teaspoon. Cornflake crumbs, one quarter cup. Heat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. Cook onion and eggplant in fat until golden brown. Add tomatoes, salt, and pepper. Mix thoroughly. Pour into casserole and top with breadcrumbs. Bake 30 minutes. Sauces. Mock hollandaise sauce. Six servings, two tablespoons each. Cream cheese softened, three ounce package. Egg beaten, one. Lemon juice, two tablespoons. Milk, two tablespoons. Salt, one eighth teaspoon. Beat cream cheese and egg together until smooth. Add lemon juice, milk, and salt. Mix well. Cook over low heat, stirring constantly until sauce is thick and fluffy. End of section six. Read by Trish Rutter, Wilmington, Delaware, June eighth, twenty twenty one. Section 7 of Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betty B. Selections from Aunt Sammy's Radio Recipes and USDA Favorites by Ruth Van Diemen and Fanny Walker Yeatman. Recipes from the 1970s, Salads and Breads. Salads, jellied vegetable salad, six servings, one half cup each. Lemon flavored gelatin, three ounce package. Unflavored gelatin, one teaspoon. Boiling water, one cup. Cold water, one cup. Onion, finely chopped, one teaspoon. Salt, one half teaspoon. Green pepper chopped, one quarter cup. Carrots shredded, one quarter cup. Celery diced, one quarter cup. Radishes thinly sliced, one quarter cup. Salad greens, six leaves. Mix flavored and unflavored gelatin. Dissolve in boiling water. Add cold water, onion, and salt. Chill in refrigerator until mixture begins to thicken. Gently stir in green pepper, carrots, celery, and radishes. Pour into a one quart mold or six individual molds. Chill until set. Unmold on salad greens. Luncheon Chef's Salad. Six servings, about three cups each without dressing. Head lettuce, one medium. Radishes thinly sliced, eight. Green onions thinly sliced, four. Tomatoes cut in eighths, three large. Ham cooked, diced, two cups. 
Swiss cheese, coarsely shredded, one and one half cups, seven ounces. Croutons, one and one third cups. Salad dressing, as desired. Wash and drain lettuce. Reserve outer leaves. Tear remaining lettuce into bite-sized pieces. Toss lettuce pieces lightly with radishes and onions. Line individual salad bowls with lettuce leaves. For each salad, use two cups lettuce mixture and top with four tomato wedges, one-third cup ham, and one-quarter cup cheese. Top with croutons. Serve with salad dressing of your choice. Jellied Citrus Avocado Salad. Six servings, three-quarter cup each. Lemon-flavored gelatin, three-ounce package. Boiling water, one and one-half cups. Grapefruit juice, one-half cup. Salt, one-quarter teaspoon. Grapefruit sections, diced, one-half cup. Orange sections diced, one half cup. Avocado diced, one and one half cups. Salad greens, six leaves. Dissolve gelatin in boiling water. Add grapefruit juice and salt. Chill until mixture begins to thicken. Add fruits. Pour into individual molds. Chill until set. Unmold on salad greens. Breads. White bread, two loaves, 18 slices each. Flour, unsifted, about five and a half cups. Sugar, three tablespoons. Salt, two teaspoons. Yeast, active dry, two packages. Milk, two cups. Shortening, one quarter cup. Shortening, melted or oil, one tablespoon. Mix two cups of flour with sugar, salt, and yeast. Heat milk and one quarter cup shortening together until very warm. 120 degrees Fahrenheit to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Shortening does not need to melt. Gradually stir milk mixture into flour mixture. Add one more cup flour. Be two minutes at high speed on electric mixer. Mix in enough of the remaining flour to make a soft dough that leaves the side of the bowl. Knead on a lightly floured surface until dough is smooth and elastic, about 10 minutes. Cover with plastic wrap, then a clean towel. Let rest 20 minutes. Grease two loaf pans, nine by five by three inches. Divide dough in half. Shape into loaves, place in loaf pans, brush tops with one tablespoon fat. Cover with plastic wrap, refrigerate two to 24 hours. Remove from refrigerator, puncture gently any air bubbles on surface with toothpick or cake tester. Let rest 10 minutes before baking. Preheat oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. Bake 40 minutes or until done. Remove bread from pans. Cool on racks. Squash bread. One loaf, 18 slices. Flour, unsifted. One and one half cups. Cinnamon, two teaspoons. Baking powder, one teaspoon. Baking soda, one half teaspoon. Salt, one quarter teaspoon. Eggs, two. Sugar, three quarter cup. Oil, one half cup. Vanilla, two teaspoons. Zucchini or yellow summer squash, coarsely shredded, lightly packed, one and one-third cups. Preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate. Grease a nine by five by three inch loaf pan. Mix dry ingredients, except sugar, thoroughly. Beat eggs until frothy. Add sugar, oil, and vanilla. Beat until lemon colored, about three minutes. Stir in squash, add dry ingredients. Mix just until dry ingredients are moistened. Pour into loaf pan, bake 40 minutes or until toothpick inserted in center of loaf comes out clean. Cool on rack, remove from pan after 10 minutes. Muffins, 12 medium sized muffins. Flour, unsifted, two cups. Baking powder, one tablespoon. Sugar, one third cup. Salt, one teaspoon. Egg, slightly beaten, one. Milk, one cup. Shortening, melted or oil, one third cup. Preheat oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit hot. Grease muffin tins. Mix flour, baking powder, sugar, and salt thoroughly. Mix egg and milk. Add fat. Pour milk mixture into flour mixture. Stir until dry ingredients are barely moistened. Do not over mix. Batter will be lumpy. Fill muffin tins half full of batter. Bake 20 to 25 minutes until lightly browned. Cornbread. Six servings. Four by two and a half inches each. Yellow cornmeal, one cup. Flour, unsifted, one cup. Baking powder, four teaspoons. Sugar, one quarter cup. Salt, one half teaspoon. Milk, one cup. 
egg beaten one shortening melted or oil two tablespoons preheat oven to four hundred degrees fahrenheit hot grease an eight by eight by two inch baking pan mix dry ingredients thoroughly mix milk and egg stir in fat add liquid to dry ingredients stir only enough to mix pour batter into pan bake twenty to twenty five minutes or until lightly browned banana bread one loaf eighteen slices flour unsifted one and three quarter cups baking powder one tablespoon salt one half teaspoon sugar three quarter cup shortening one half cup eggs two bananas mashed one cup preheat oven to three hundred fifty degrees fahrenheit moderate grease nine by five by three inch loaf pan mix flour baking powder and salt thoroughly mix sugar fat and eggs together until light and fluffy stir in bananas add dry ingredients and stir just until smooth pour into pan bake until firmly set when lightly touched in center 50 to 60 minutes bread may crack across top cool on rack remove from pan after 10 minutes end of section 7section eight of selections from aunt sammy's radio recipes and usda favorites this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org read by betty b selections from aunt sammy's radio recipes and usda favorites by ruth van diemen and fanny walker yeatman recipes from the 1970s desserts sour cream cookies four dozen cookies butter or margarine softened one half cup sugar one cup eggs beaten two vanilla one teaspoon flour unsifted one and three quarter cups salt one half teaspoon baking soda one quarter teaspoon nutmeg one half teaspoon sour cream one half cup nuts chopped one cup Preheat oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Moderate. Grease baking sheets. Beat fat and sugar together until creamy. Beat in eggs and vanilla. Stir flour, salt, baking soda, and nutmeg together. Mix flour mixture, sour cream, and nuts with fat mixture. Drop dough from a teaspoon onto baking sheets. Space cookies about two inches apart. Bake 10 to 12 minutes or until lightly browned around the edges. Baked pastry shell eight or nine inch pastry shell six to eight servings flour unsifted one cup salt one half teaspoon shortening or lard one third cup cold water about two tablespoons preheat oven to 450 degrees fahrenheit very hot mix flour and salt thoroughly mix in fat only until mixture is crumbly a pastry blender two table knives or a fork may be used for mixing add a little water at a time while mixing lightly dough should be just moist enough to cling together when pressed for easier handling cover dough tightly and let stand a few minutes shape dough into a ball roll out on a lightly floured surface until the dough is at least an inch wider all around than the pie pan fold dough in half for easier lifting and centering in pie pan smooth pastry into place lifting edges as necessary to eliminate air bubbles Trim off irregular edges, leaving about one half inch beyond edge of pan. Fold under to edge of pan. Shape edge into plain or fancy rim as desired. Prick bottom and sides well with the fork before baking. Bake 12 to 15 minutes until golden brown. Cool before filling. Variations. Pastry shell filled before baking. Do not prick the pastry. Fill and bake as directed in pie filling recipe pastry for two crust pie double the recipe for baked pastry shell form dough into two balls one slightly larger than the other roll out larger ball and fit into pie pan roll remaining dough for top crust make small slits to let steam escape during baking put filling into pastry line pan and top with second crust fold edges of pastry under and press together firmly to seal bake as directed in pie recipe apple pie nine inch pie six to eight servings pastry for two crust pie one sugar three quarter cup cornstarch one tablespoon 
cinnamon one half teaspoon apples tart pared sliced six cups preheat oven to four hundred degrees fahrenheit hot prepare pastry mix dry ingredients lightly with apples in a bowl put filling into pastry line nine inch pan top with second crust fold edges of pastry under and press together firmly to seal bake fifty to sixty minutes or until filling is bubbly and crust is lightly browned apple turnovers six turnovers pastry flour unsifted one and one half cups salt three quarter teaspoon shortening one half cup cold water about three tablespoons butter or margarine two tablespoons filling apples tart pared sliced one and one half cups sugar one quarter cup salt one eighth teaspoon cinnamon one quarter teaspoon nutmeg one eighth teaspoon mix flour and salt thoroughly mix in shortening only until mixture is crumbly a pastry blender two table knives or a fork may be used for mixing add water a little at a time mixing lightly dough should be just moist enough to cling together when pressed shape dough into a ball roll out on a lightly floured surface until dough is about 12 by 12 inches dot with butter or margarine fold pastry so that two sides meet in center press folded pastry with fingers fold ends to center and press with fingers wrap in waxed paper and chill divide pastry into six balls roll each ball out on a lightly floured surface to make a six inch square preheat oven to 400 degrees fahrenheit hot place about one quarter cup apples onto half of each pastry square about one half inch from edges so that when top is folded over the turnover will be triangular mix sugar salt cinnamon and nutmeg sprinkle apples with sugar mixture moisten edges of pastry squares fold pastry diagonally over apple mixture seal edges with a fork prick tops of turnovers bake until lightly browned about 25 to 30 minutes gingerbread shortening one half cup brown sugar packed one third cup egg one light molasses one half cup flour unsifted one and one half cups salt one half teaspoon baking soda three quarter teaspoon ginger one half teaspoon cinnamon one half teaspoon boiling water one half cup preheat oven to three hundred fifty degrees fahrenheit moderate grease an eight by eight by two inch pan beat shortening and sugar until creamy add egg and molasses beat well mix dry ingredients thoroughly add to molasses mixture alternately with boiling water beat after each addition pour batter into pan bake 35 to 40 minutes serve warm cheesecake nine inch cake 12 servings swieback crumbs one cup butter or margarine melted two tablespoons sugar two tablespoons cinnamon one quarter teaspoon cream cheese softened 16 ounces sugar one half cup flour two tablespoons salt one half teaspoon lemon rind grated one lemon lemon juice one lemon egg yolks five sour cream one cup vanilla one half teaspoon egg whites five mix crumbs melted fat sugar and cinnamon line bottom of nine inch spring form pan with three quarter cup crumbs saving remaining crumbs for top preheat oven to 325 degrees fahrenheit slow beat cheese until soft mix in sugar flour and salt stir in lemon rind and juice add yolks one at a time beating after each addition add sour cream and vanilla mix well beat egg whites until stiff fold egg whites into cheese mixture pour mixture into pan cover with remaining crumbs bake one hour or until set cool on cake rack refrigerate sponge cake roll cake flour unsifted one cup or all-purpose flour unsifted one cup less two tablespoons baking powder one teaspoon salt one quarter teaspoon eggs three sugar one cup water one third cup vanilla one teaspoon confectioner sugar one quarter cup filling as desired preheat oven to 375 degrees fahrenheit moderate line a 15 by 10 by one inch pan with foil or heavy paper grease mix flour baking powder and salt thoroughly beat eggs about five minutes until thick and lemon colored and heavy peaks cling to lifted beater 
Beat in sugar one tablespoon at a time. Slowly mix in the water and vanilla. Gently mix or fold in dry ingredients only until batter is smooth. Pour into pan. Bake 12 to 15 minutes, just until center is firm when lightly touched. Place a sheet of foil or wax paper on a rack. Sprinkle with about three quarters of the confectioner's sugar. Turn cake onto foil or paper. Peel foil or paper from cake and quickly trim away any crusty edges. Cool on rack. Spread cake with the filling as desired. See note. Starting with the narrow edge, roll cake. Place seam down. Sift remaining confectioner's sugar over top. Note. For the filling, use jelly or jam, or use whipped dessert topping or sweetened flavored whipped cream alone or with fresh blueberries or sliced sweetened strawberries, well drained. Or fill a chilled roll with slightly softened ice cream and place in freezer until used. Yellow chiffon cake. 10 inch cake, 15 servings. Oil, one half cup. Egg yolks, four. Water, three quarter cup. Vanilla, one and a half teaspoons. Cake flour, unsifted, two cups. Sugar, one and one half cups. Baking powder, two and one half teaspoons. Salt, one teaspoon. Egg whites, four. Cream of tartar, one half teaspoon. Preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Moderate. Place oil, unbeaten egg yolks, water, and vanilla in mixing bowl and mix well. Mix dry ingredients thoroughly and add to liquid mixture. Beat until smooth. Pour egg whites into large mixing bowl. Add cream of tartar. Beat until very stiff peaks are formed. Fold egg yolk mixture gently into egg white mixture. Pour batter immediately into ungreased 10-inch tube pan. Bake about one and one quarter hours or until top is springy to touch. Invert cake in pan until cool. Serve plain or topped with a lemon or chocolate glaze. End of section eight. End of selections from Aunt Sammy's radio recipes and USDA favorites by Ruth Van Diemen and Fanny Walker Yeatman.